Hello researchers, this video shows starting an overnight yeast culture followed by genomic DNA extraction. We will then use that DNA as a template in our polymerase chain reaction. I'll start by flaming the lid and mouth of the bottle, then add 3 milliliters of yeast media to a culture tube. The protocol for this overnight yeast culture will be similar to our bacterial small volume culture that we started in a previous video. When finished, I'll again flame the mouth and lid before closing the stock bottle. I'll flame sterilize the inoculation loop and search for a single colony. Prior to removing this colony, plunge the loop into the agar to completely cool the metal. It's important to pick a single colony and then keep the lid on the yeast when done. We'll swirl the loop in the media to ensure proper inoculation. For optimal growth of this single cell eukaryote, we'll go into a 30 degrees Celsius shaker overnight. The following day, you'll notice that some yeast have settled on to the bottom so we'll need to use a vortexer to homogenize the solution. These culture tubes have two lid positions, so we'll press down to seal the tube before mixing. We only need 200 microliters of yeast for our DNA extraction, so we'll transfer that volume to a microcentrifuge tube. We'll balance the centrifuge and run for 5 minutes at 5,000 RPM. Now that we've pelleted the cells, remove the media and incubate with 100 microliters of lysis buffer. 0.1% SDS will solubilize proteins and lipids, and the lithium acetate weakens the cell wall. Incubating at 70 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes will facilitate the lysis process. Next, we'll add 300 microliters of 100% ethanol. Ethanol alters the dielectric constant of the solution and prevents water from forming a hydration shell around the negatively charged phosphate backbone of genomic DNA. This will permit the precipitation of DNA by reducing solubility. We'll vortex to mix and centrifuge for 3 minutes at max speed. Next, aspirate the supernatant. The pellet is clearly seen at the bottom. We'll then add 70% ethanol to wash the pellet of unwanted salts. The 30% water is enough to solubilize salts but maintain insolubility of DNA. We need to re-centrifuge the dislodged pellet so we'll spin down for one minute at max speed. We can then remove the 70% ethanol and let the pellet air dry for one to five minutes. Afterward, we can dissolve the DNA in TE buffer. TE is water with added tris for pH buffering and EDTA for cation sequestration. Many nucleases depend on metal cations for function so removing these out of solution helps mitigate nucleic acid degradation. One more centrifugation for 30 seconds at max speed. We'll set for one minute and hit stop after 30 seconds. At the bottom, we've pelleted any unwanted products, so we want to take 100 microliters from the supernatant without disturbing the pellet. Now that we have our DNA template, we can proceed to setting up a PCR reaction. This reaction has water, buffer, forward and reverse primers, deoxyribonucleotide triphosphates, our DNA template, and a polymerase enzyme. We're setting it up in a special PCR tube. These have thin walls to allow quick temperature fluctuations when inside the thermocycler. You always want to add water and buffer first and the polymerase last when working with separate components. Nowadays, you can buy master mixes that have buffer, DNTPs, and a heat-stable polymerase all in one tube. This reduces time and errors when setting up experiments. 
Just make sure that by the end of your reaction setup, all components are together at the bottom of the PCR tube. Careful pipetting or a quick centrifugation will ensure all reagents are present in solution. We'll go into the PCR machine with our labeled tube and make sure the lid is tightened down. You can easily save and select programs on modern machines and we've determined that 55 degrees Celsius is optimal for our specific primer annealing temperature. The program then shows temperatures as they are cycled. You see here that 94 degrees is used in DNA denaturation, 55 degrees for primer binding, and the 72 degrees for 3' prime extension. It also shows that we've chosen 30 cycles of amplification. The final extension for 7 minutes at 72 degrees helps ensure full length polymerization and good yield of our target DNA. Next time we will isolate our plasmid of interest from bacteria and purify the PCR product from today's experiment. Ultimately we want to ligate these two molecules together, the plasmid and the PCR product, to construct our recombinant DNA. This will be used as a reporter construct for our final ONPG assay. As always, thanks for watching.